Okay. Um, uh, thank you very much, Serkan, for first of all inviting me and for organizing this event. Uh, with this presentation, I would like to share with you the research activity that we are currently doing on mapping and monitoring glaciers. And this is part of, of a project which is, I would say, quite ambitious. And we aim at a large scale mapping, uh, multi temporal, so to provide maps at different times and at the global level. And we want to do this using uh, deep learning and cloud computing. So this is our uh, work, and you see here the people that are involved. Konstantin is actually doing most of the work. He's a PhD student. And then we have also collaborators from other universities. Um, let me just give a, a brief introduction. Um, mapping and monitoring glaciers is important for several, uh, for several reasons. Uh, Maybe the, the first one that comes to mind is that glaciers are very sensitive to variations in precipitations and temperature. So they are considered as one of the essential variables to monitor climate change and for climate change models. They are also important for other reasons. Um, at, the at the local level, they are often very important source of fresh water and there are parts of the world where glaciers are fundamental for supplying uh, fresh water to, to entire villages, entire areas. So the retreat of, of uh, glaciers affect very uh, severely certain communities. Uh, but it's also very important at the global level, indeed melting and, and retreat of glaciers have an impact on sea level rise. There is also, a, let's say, a feedback loop that um, uh, basically by the retreat of, of glaciers, which are uh, very reflective of the sunlight and sun energy, by retreating that uh, also the, 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 the earth absorbs more uh, of this energy and um, in increases the temperature. So, in, in general, uh, monitoring and mapping glaciers is, is very important for all these reasons. Um, unfortunately, we don't really have a global inventory of all glaciers' outlines, and especially we don't have one with multi-temporal information. So, what is currently is existing is this GLIMS dataset, which stands for Global Land Ice Measurements from Space. And typically it's a well, large data set which collects all the polygons of the outlines of the polygon, uh, uh, outlines of the glaciers. And, but this is done typically by different research groups and by uh, visual interpretation of satellite images. And is done manually, so to say. So it contains errors, it contains subjectivity especially in difficult parts where the, the glaciers are covered by debris, by vegetation, and so on. And also it's a little bit like a patchwork because certain glaciers are mapped in one year and others in different years. So there is not like a consistent map of all glaciers um, in the globe. So what we would like to do, and this is the aim of uh, this project, is called Massive is to um, well, use machine learning to produce large-scale inventories, which include detailed maps of the outlines of the glaciers, but also the mass balance, the surface mass balance. And we want to do this also at different times. So we can look back in time for, let's say, the last 40 years and produce a time series of how glaciers are actually changing over time. This is a project which involves several partners, uh, the University of Oslo, us, and also Eurac Research in Bolzano in Italy. Of course, this comes with um, several challenges. From the machine learning point of view, one of the challenges, is it possible to actually build one model that is able to classify correctly all glaciers worldwide? So it's about generalization ability of the model, then there is, of course, a big data issue related how to deal with this huge amount of data. So that's, uh, those are the challenges that I will try to come back in my presentation. So, so far, so this is a, is a work in, in progress. What we have done, we have been 
collecting uh, quite a lot of data to build a, a benchmark data set. The aim is to then finally publish this, of course, for the, for the scientific community. What we aim is to collect uh, data that allow us to build model with high generalization ability. So this is one of the reasons why we want to include glaciers uh, of different types, uh, clean glaciers, but also debris cover, vegetation cover, small and large, and different areas of the world, of course. Um, so far, we have collected data for about 8% of all the glaciers worldwide and 10% of the glaciated area in the world, uh, excluding Antarctica and Greenland. As reference data, we are aiming to use uh, GLIMS and also two regional inventories for Alps and Svalbard. We are collecting quite a large set of uh, data from different satellites, and including um, um, optical data from mostly Landsat and all Landsat satellites, Sentinel-2. Uh, we also use elevation and slope data from different sources. And we also want to use SAR intensity and in SAR coherence from different sensors. So we, it's quite hard job to collect all this data because, of course, we want to look back in time and to combine and fuse all this data. We have organized so far the data into tiles, near square tiles of uh, about 10 by 10 square kilometers. And we have divided it in training, validation, and testing for uh, modeling and for uh, validating our, our machine learning algorithm. So, um, to have a look at the global level, this is the map of the areas that are included so far in this data set. We have uh, almost all the glaciated area in, in South Central uh, Europe, mostly the Alps, but we have also a lot of data included from North of Europe, um, also Alaska and also the tropical area. So we are so far trying to indeed collect as much as possible data from different parts of the world and to also include the diversity of all the characteristics of the glaciers and the surrounding environment. Um, now I will show you some case studies because we build this data set gradually and testing the algorithm first at smaller uh, case studies. We started with the case study of uh, the Alps. So we first build this uh, data set using Sentinel-1 and 2 data, so fusing optical and SAR, digital elevation model, and we use uh, an inventory uh, from 2020. And of course, a mapping clean glaciers is relatively easy. The real challenge is to map debris covered parts of the glacier, which is usually on the tongue of the, of the glaciers. So we developed, well, this is a deep learning uh, network, which is fusing all these different data sources. So it's, uh, the, the, the fusion goes, uh, is done within the, the network fusing the optical data, the, the different features extracted from the digital elevation models, as well as SAR features. All these are fused and in a unit-like network are then used to make uh, semantic segmentation, so pixel-wise classification of glaciers. Um, this is a little bit of some um, results that we obtained on this first uh, study area. Uh, we, sh we compared, let's say, our deep learning approach, which is uh, a unit-like network, with uh, random forest. And we also looked at different data sets. So including first only optical, then we added a digital elevation model, and finally SAR. So what we notice is indeed that our deep learning approach performs better. That's what we see from the quantitative results, and also the fusion of all these uh, data sources have a positive impact on the accuracy. This number might uh, seem that the improvement is small if you look at these numbers, but when you look a little bit of uh, more qualitatively how the results are here, you see the input images and our reference data. We notice that our 
algorithm performs particularly better on the most critical part of the glaciers, which is usually the tongue. And you see that if you use a uh, random forest, so methods that don't include spatial information, then typically these parts are, are not correctly classified. Okay, so these are the, the real challenges. But fusing all these different data sources and combining them in a powerful deep learning model typically gives better results. And of course, I also want to emphasize this is important if we want to monitor changes, because these are typically the area where changes occur over the year. Um, a second case study is in the Arctic, and here we have collected the data from eight different areas of interest. Again, we have combined uh, data from different sources, in this case, mostly optical images and digital elevation models. Again, we use uh, GLIMS uh, as, as reference and an additional inventory, a local inventory. These are some of the uh, results on this area. It turns out that our uh, model performs slightly better in this case. So in this area, we, we achieved uh, something like 0.95% uh, of F1 score. Um, yeah, I will, don't have time to comment all in the details, but uh, also here are some qualitative examples. Uh, maybe one thing we were positively surprised is that the model predicts pretty well also uh, areas which are quite difficult to distinguish because they're really covered by debris, but uh, the, the spatial contextual information allows us to indeed perform quite well on these areas and also on some uh, Calvin fronts. Uh, in the interest of time, I will skip this. I will move to the last case studies, which is really going towards the, the global level mapping. Here we have included different parts of the world in our data set for training the model. And these are uh, indeed different parts, the Alps, the Himalayan region, also the tropical uh, glaciers and so on. We have developed for this uh, case study a hybrid CNN transformer model. So we are designing a model that combines convolutional neural networks with transformer, which have enhanced ability to capture long range spatial dependencies. And these are some of our preliminary results. And one thing that for us is a very important result is the performances are uh, pretty good. And also uh, it shows that the model is able to generalize pretty well in different parts of the world. So because this was one of the uh, fundamental research question, can we develop one model for all the glacier worldwide, or we need to train separated models for different areas. Okay, um, what, what to do next? So, so far we have tested on already a relatively large data set, but of course we aim to, to go global and to also multi-temporal, so possibly to produce like a map every month to see indeed the trend and to have a yeah, better understanding of how glaciers are behaving, how they're retreating. We want to do this by using uh, cloud computing. Uh, of course, uh, it would be too difficult to, to do this on, on a local machine. Uh, we have some funding now to uh, use uh, CreoDS, which is a cloud computing system that gives us access to, to open data, Sentinel data, Lancet, and so on. And this is what we are currently doing. We are exploring this, this uh, computing infrastructure to finally try to uh, scale this up to, to possibly a global level. Um, well, just some final uh, thought. Okay, the, 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 this project called Massive uh, uh, aims at producing this large scale inventories of, of glaciers, so the outlines. But later on, we will look at also the, the glacier mass balance, which is also very important for hydrological modeling and so on. So far, three case study, and hopefully in the near future, we can scale it up to the global level. If you are interested, uh, well, here there is, a, uh, you can scan this to see the details of the project. I would like to just two um, 
take the time here to advertise to, let's say, geodata activities I'm involved. They are not related to Glacier. One is the uh, data fusion contest. I'm involved uh, in the image analysis and data fusion committee of the GRSS. And every year we organize a contest where we promote the development of machine learning models for different uh, tasks in image analysis and data fusion. And this year we are organizing uh, a nice contest. It's about large scale, fine grained building classification and semantic urban reconstruction. And last thing is, uh, well, as part of the IADF, we also organize this uh, web page. It's a catalog of Earth observation data sets that you can use to search according to uh, the type of sensor and uh, the type of um, the area of interest and so on. So if you are interested in collecting data and developing machine learning models, this could be a nice way to find open data sets. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Claudio, for, for your presentation. So um, are there any questions for Claudio? OK, one. Yeah. Thank you, Claudio. Uh, the uh, temporal reference, I mean, can really confuse the model. So, so your training data, is it only just one year now? or? So what we have is, is this Glimpse data set where, well, you have maybe a glacier mapped in uh, 2020, another glacier is mapped in 2010, mm. and it's, it's indeed a, a patchwork, but uh, that's, that's the data we currently have. So once we mm. train the model, we will, of course, uh, test what is the generalization ability in, in space and in time, because that's indeed important, and also across sensors because, uh, of course, we are training with different sensors. We tried to find, let's say, uh, a common basis where we have, uh, also, also when we combine Sentinel and Lancet data, we had to select a subset of bands which are spectrally overlapping, so we can ensure that there is some transferability from one data to another. But indeed, it's, it's, it's one of the challenges. Is one In the point, point observations where they drill through the no, uh, no, no. You, so you don't use uh, because there's the point data sets, I think, with uh, So these are more detailed data sets mm -hmm. and usually it's really also to to estimate the, the mass or the volume of the glacier. In this mm -hmm. case our uh, the first part of the project is just about the outlines. Typically these are done manually by visual inspection. So mm -hmm. that's what currently glaciologists are doing. So this data set it's a collection of local data sets done by different research groups and which are manually digitizing. And your interest is not to go back, right? Just to, from now on, to predict like No, we monthly. also want to go back you in time. You want to go back to like 20 well, years? Yeah, from the first Lancet missions, we okay. can indeed go back like uh, 40 years okay. and, and indeed make this uh, multi-temporal data set of the glaciers. Have you heard of Glance? It just came out a few months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, 30 meter global, uh, it has also ice, snow, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 20, 20 years, 30 okay. meter, 20 years. This is the first okay. the high resolution lake yeah. cover. So, yeah, well, mm -hmm. I actually have seen that, but uh, we will see yeah, how this two okay, things are Thank you, sorry, I'm taking a lot of time. Yeah. We, we aim to time. produce polygons. That's what also maybe is uh, something we want to emphasize. The polygons of the outline, so it's... Uh, not the roster out, but in the end. Okay, yeah, we have the lunch time for, for further discussion. Thank, so you. I thank, thank you very much, Claudio.